Good morning, friends. It's Laxor again, and the cycle 2, 1.1 for last epoch, is upon us. It will be will be going live in, I don't know, about 10 hours-ish, roughly like that. And I'll be streaming in about 30 minutes, something like that. And we're gonna build a great... I'm trying a great build, setting it up, Fury Crafting. But I wanted to give you the 5 best builds I think will be really good. According to what I've played them before in 1.0 and now with the changes that came to 1.1. One of them is actually almost unchanged, so that should be really good. The other ones were a little bit changed and especially all of them, of course. With the Exanctionists, you can see here that all the ward builds are, of course, a little bit cucked. But its I don't think it's as bad. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But these look the best, the most promising for Cycle 2. So let's just dive right in with the first one actually this is the one we're gonna build today on stream and this is so this will be updated by the way this link to the build planner will be completely updated and the idea is with it's a shaman build right a shaman build that casts avalanche right the, the new avalanche which auto casts upheaval which auto casts earthquake which auto casts a chill ground on yourself and also auto casts minions i believe i'm not even sure about that so just cast everything, right? And we even do this with this item. Have a splat, which is finally good or useful. Because as it says down there, at the three set things, if you have all three, two levels to avalanche, and 100% chance to cast avalanche boulder at target when you critically hit with a spell. So we will be casting spells, right? When we do it ourselves. But also this will auto cast whenever we crit. This is insanely good. Um, I think I'll make a sort of melee version of it that we also be hitting a little bit. Um, looking into something we can auto cast from that. Again, this is completely work in progress. But considering how Avalanche has been changed, this looks insanely good. So again, the idea is you have... We don't even have Fury Leap. I might go for Fury Leap, but you don't really need it right now because we have... Um, the Evade now, right? The Evade mechanic. So we might not need it. Um, we can look into other spell casting that, that do crits, but the base idea here is we have our gathering storm, so we do a bit of, bit of melee hits, right, and cast spells through that. We have the upheaval, we have the earthquake, we have the totem, although this is debatable. And um, wait, what's missing? Oh yeah, avalanche. Okay, I didn't even skip into this. Avalanche, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, well, I can't tell you much about this build yet because I will. This is just a broken progress. I will do it later on stream when you come back when 1.1 launches, and this build plan will be completely updated. And I will make a video about this as well. I just wanted to give you the idea of what that is because that seems to be really great with what Avalanche can do now in the new tree. Auto casting or anything like Crater, for example. Every third large boulder creates an earthquake on impact. And you can also make more large boulders somewhere. I don't know where it is. So that seems to be really, really powerful. We'll look into this later. Um, passives, I think, are mostly similar. Um, yeah, I haven't even tagged into all this. So yeah, don't want to go into anything that isn't finished. We'll look over this later. But that's that's looking like a really great build. Another one I'm highly, highly recommending is the... Oh yeah, this is the Blood Warlock or the Bleed Warlock, if you want. This was initially the, the one I wanted to run for the cycle to get to the pinnacle boss the fastest and actually kill him because this one can kill tier 4 Jura easily in 1.0. Which is a good indicator that it should be able to do this as well in cycle 2. However, it received a bunch of nerfs. So I don't know how good it actually is now. Okay, we'll have to test this. Especially because Ghost Flame got cucked pretty heavily. Um, because I only went for ghost, into Ghost Flame for the, the damage reduction in the ward, which got a lot of hits. Chaos Boards got worse and the Fisher got also nerfed, so... I think it can still do it. It might not be strong enough. But still, it can definitely be like, strong enough to do Pinnacle Boss. You can still do all the content up until there. It can even go to higher corruption, no problem, I'm pretty sure. But the Pinnacle Boss, I don't know if you can take it. Um, this is something, if you want to do it, you can... You can try it. I explain more about this on my YouTube channel. It's this this video over here. OP, OP Cycle 2 starter build. High corruption budget bleed warlock. The great thing about this is also that it is cheap. 
right? You only need Exanctionus and Frostbite Shackles, which you can get easily from Formosus. This one is the only one that is somewhat tough to farm because Exanctionus for some people just doesn't drop ever. And so this might be tough. You don't need the Blood of the Exile. It is very good, but it's not necessary for the build. It just makes it much better. And everything else is just Exalts, which you should be able to farm just fine. So it's a very cheap build. Um, and it's very strong. It does it does a lot of damage. The idea basically is you only cast your Fissure and it also casts your Chaos Bolts and it also casts your Rib Blood, which gives you Ward and Health and damage. And you have a lot of evasive skills like the Ghost Flame and the Profane Veil. You put um, Unspecialized Transplant also in your bar. So you have actually three evasive skills. So you can dodge all the attacks from your bosses while the Fissure does all damage itself you just cast it one then once it does the damage and you just jump around that's the idea of it it's really focused on killing bosses but it got a bunch of nerfs so i don't know if it's good enough but it does seem very strong still i will say that the next one is one of my favorites actually oh i haven't even migrated this my van one of my favorites actually uh, it's not as easy to farm because as you can tell it's a bunch of uniques um but this is the lady anthrax right the poison warlock this is really strong really strong actually but you need a bunch of items you can tell so this is not as easy to farm if you're on cycle um that's the problem if you're playing legacy you can go with it the idea is mostly focused around in your passives for the warlock we have this the vile tide and you cast the damage over time skill and enemies within 50 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of poison which is very easy with this build you gain poison overload for 12 seconds which gives you um some damage, I don't even know, it gives you more damage. And you cast the Filing Nova, which expands Albert's poisoning enemies it hits. So this is really the, the main idea of this build. You have, you have all the damage over time builds, right? You have uh, uh, skills. You have the Wandering Spirits, you have the Cathonic Fissure, it's all damage over time. Even the Hungering Souls. And you just apply a ton of poison stacks to towards the enemy, or on the enemy. And then you have this Viltide Poison Explosion, which does a lot of damage and applies even more Poison Stacks. So this I got to like 200 Poison Stacks, no problem on enemies, on bosses and whatnot. This thing kicks pretty heavily. It's very strong. But again, you need the Plague Bearer's Staff. which gives you... Especially in a good roll, it gives you 200% chance to apply Poison on hit. Inflict Plague on hit. Poison Penetration. More damage over time. Blind attackers and health drain per second, which, okay, doesn't matter, but this is insane. Gives you a lot, a lot of poison stacks on enemies. Everything else really is survivability. Now, this isn't as good anymore, right? Because it's got nerfed. I think it's still very strong, the Bone Claymore Barboot, right? One vault per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. But you probably won't be getting up to 8k ward anymore, right? As you did before. Because the main idea is you have the Bone Clan Barboot, so you put everything into a Necrotic Resistance. As you can tell, it's 340% Necrotic Resistance with all these items. This one, for example, also gives you Ward Decay Threshold. Um, these all have Physical Res or Necrotic Res and Health. Damage over time. Spell damage, yeah. And damage over time. So it's damage over time or Necrotic Res for survivability. So this is what this does. All the items are mostly focused on giving you more health because all the damage is coming from your skills and passives and this one. Everything else is mostly survivability. It is not cheap, but it's a very strong build if you want to try it. Now, you don't necessarily need this one if you can just go for... These two are also very good. Um, Exanctionist and Lessers of the Living, which you can farm somewhat easily. Again, Exanctionist just doesn't drop for some people. Happens. Um, this one, you can do it without it but it's a, it's a really nice addition and this one should be somewhat easy to find i feel like especially with the circle of fortune when you get your whole set items that should be easy um that's pretty much it very very strong again the main focus of these or the main idea with these is that you have damage over time skills because you have to cast the damage over time skill that auto casts the vile tide poison nova thingy and profane veil of course uh, so viability skill, but it's also damage over time, I believe. Yeah, it's also damage over time. So you have all the skills that cast this thing automatically. Very great. Transplant really just in there again for bone armor. So we are uh, we have more survivability because the necromancer always has issues with that, obviously. 
Then the next one, this is... <laughs> Wait, which one is it? Yeah, this is the Bot and Bob build. It's a funny build, I like this a lot. It's, it's a lot of... It's a great build. Basically, the idea is you have one big Archmage, right? Who does all the damage, he's your damage dealer, and you have... This is... This is Bob, and you have Bot, which is your Bone Golem, which is the tank. So you have only two minions, the tank, and the damage dealer. You yourself, you do have Harvest to have a little bit of fun, but it's mostly to gain Ward if you hit Cursed Enemies and gain the Critical Resistance Shred and um, Spirit Shards. That's the main idea Eat. You don't really need it, but I kind of like it as addition. You can drop the Harvest for something else, but it is kind of cool. Um, you can't really go with Infernal Shade anymore, as you know, because this got changed. You can only have one Shade at a time. Um, so we're definitely going to go for the Red Shade. You don't want to go for Blind Fury anymore. Because it removes the crit. You want to have this down here. And yeah, you can see it. Um, your minion always crits. That's what you want. So that means... And you put always you put always Red Shade on the Mage. So he always crits. And it has a lot of damage, actually. And your, your Golem is really just to defend. I went for the Cold here, as you can tell. You don't really need this, but it's a nice addition. Um, because we have... The Eulogy of Blood. Right? Gives cold melee damage and minion cold melee damage, and um, you also cast real blood in nearby targets, health gain from that, bleed on melee hit, bleed duration, uh, minion necrotic damage, minion melee damage. So it's just a very good item that gives your minions nice damage, especially necrotic, which is your mage, and melee and cold damage. Although you can, as, as I said, you can, it gives you 16 minion melee cold damage, that gives you tank more damage but again he's the tank he's not a damage dealer so it's not necessary i just kind of like to tag into this i might change it though uh, on stream later i'll keep all these open we'll look into it <clears throat> again this is also a bit more expensive same idea again with necrotic resistance not as much we only have 250 but it gives us a nice buff in health we also have the ribbons of blood right because minions melee damage leashes health that is just very nice for the tank so he keeps alive better Death Rattle should actually be found so quite easily. You kind of need Death Rattle because the crit multi is so strong on your mage. It does a lot more damage. And as you know, all the minions, like the Skelly minions, got buffed in 1.1. So this build should be very strong. I might actually run this first time on my, on my first run on cycle. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Because the Revlot got cucked a little, so... We'll see. Anyway, this is very strong. Eulogy of Blood is not as easy to get. If you don't get it, just take a random um, um, a random one-hander like a Scepter or an Axe or whatever it is and just give it straight minion damage. Okay, You don't need it. This is the best in slot gear. You don't need the Eulogy of Blood. If you can't get it, just get a Scepter with minion damage. And Necrotic Resistance if you can to get your Bone Claim or Baboot up. Again, if you don't have it, just a uh, helmet. Also, by the way, this has four affixes on it, right? As a legendary. This is just the best in slot. You don't need all of these. <laughs> it's just, I put the best in there. Same with the um, exemptions. If you can get the skeleton mage damage on it, that would be insane. Not necessary. Um, these are the best possible things you want to have for this build, right? The fifth build is a is a crazy funny build. It's the Apocalypse Sorcerer. I don't have to migrate this, but I migrate rather. This one is, now it has a lot of gear, you don't need all of this, it's just best in slot again. The idea is, with this one, you cast a black hole, which auto-casts Meteor with Armageddon. And the Meteor does, is like a lot of damage, it's, um, the Meteor is your main damage dealer. And the black hole also does damage of course, and you have Fireball, so you can cast something, which also can auto-cast the Meteor. So there is just a lot of media happening. This is the build that usually fills your entire screen with meteors. It's actually kind of crazy. The only item you really, really need is this one, Harbing of Stars, because that makes... I gives you a lot of great buffs to the media, but mostly you have a chance to cast media automatically with Fireball. So you want to cast your Black Host and then shoot your Fireballs all the time. So I would say these two are definitely necessary. Uh, Cinder Song is just makes it... So much easier, also it removes or reduces spell cost for fireball, so it's free. So these two are the necessary ones. Everything else is cool addition. I mean, swatting of the race you should have. This one is a nice addition. It's not really necessary. It just gives you a nice fire penetration with ignite. And fire rest and also gives you crit avoidance, which is with the sorcerer pretty nice. Even though it got buffed, 
the sauce for a little bit. Um, this one is really because 1% um, increased mana region per 3% uncapped lightning resistance. So if you stack lightning rest, which I haven't even done here, then you gain more mana region with this. And it also has mana in and of itself. This was just a good slam for me, so I went with this. If you don't have it, you don't need it, just go for regular body armor and put mana region on there and level of media. It should have definitely three levels of media to give you all the extra damage, also with spell damage. And that's really what you need. This is not necessary, but it's a cool, cool addition if you have it. Everything else is um, mana region, spell crit. Yeah, spell crit, you want to also have mana again, by the way. And uh, spell damage. It's static orb, doesn't matter, but the spell damage was nice. Orb per second also. Um, spell crit, of course, is great because the more you crit with your fireballs, the more likely you are to cast Meteor on that. There's also a build that doesn't even use Black Hole, where you just do it with fireballs, which also casts your Meteor. You can also go with this. But this is a it's a fun build. It does a lot of damage also. And the only problem before in 1.0 was that the Sorcerer was very squishy and always died early or easy. So um, we have to look into 1.1 how it feels now, how he does at this point. Um, if it's finally viable to play the Sorcerer, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But this was a fun build and it's just, like you can easily go to a um, higher corruption. Again, if you can do the Pinnacle Boss, I don't know. The Pinnacle Boss is sort of the, the highest echelon right now. Um, we'll have to test it and I will test all these builds, not on the same stream obviously, but over the course of the next weeks. I have like 20 builds planned I want to try. Um, so yeah, this one is a very, very good one though. Again, you just keep casting your fireballs all the time and then you throw in your, your black hole if you have a bunch of, if you group your enemies and then the black hole sucks them in a little bit, throws hundreds of meteors on them, they all die. Simple. It does have mana problems though, right? It eats mana like crazy. Um, you can go for focus over teleport, but teleport again gives you more resistances and gives you um, stun immunity, so it is a great defensive mechanism you can use within the game. Um, if you are always out of mana, you can also go for focus, because that gives you a quick burst of mana very fast. And I've done this with the with the four build, which is similar to this one. Um, but yeah, also flame mode obviously as a defensive mechanism. I always go for this. Most people don't. But I like it when you're stunned, you cast this automatically, which is nice because it also gives you more damage. Um, but yeah, that's just how I how I do this build. So yeah, these are the five builds I would highly recommend for 1.1 by what we know about the game. If you are like me, sort of a caster style player, right? If you are a paladin player or like a warrior kind of player, then this is not for you. I guess you figured it out, but it's mostly for caster and necromancer kind of kind of stuff let me know what you think of it and i hope you're as pumped as i am for 1.1 which launches in like 10 hours and now i'm gonna actually go on stream and make these builds happen and i will see you there gentlemen bye bye